Hey guys, it's Derek and welcome to me and Alan's channel. Today I wanna to talk about something that's helped me a lot personally ever since I learned this concept about two or so years ago. And it's been one of the more interesting ideas and concepts to see played out in the real world and to really experience it from a first person perspective when I've traveled to different countries and different cultures around the world. It's called the Power Distance Index and not only is it a fascinating look into how different cultures operate and how intercommunication can change with those cultures, but it will change the way you look at your job, career, your superiors, how you interact with them and I promise you by understanding this concept it will change your life. Okay guys, so the power distance index is something that I learned about in Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Outliers. And basically he's pulling this from Hofstede's theory of cultural dimensions, where it says the extent to which less powerful members of organizations accept and expect that power is distributed unequally, or more so, the tolerance of people who are perceived to have less power to accept the commands of people that are perceived to be higher in the hierarchy. So for instance, if a manager in a country with a high power distance index were to tell his employee to do something, it would be the assumption for both of them that that employee would do that certain task without any resistance and would just follow blindly on whatever that person was saying. However, to contrast that, in a country with a low power distance index, if, an, if a manager were to give that same order to an employee, the assumption among both of them would be that the employee would come back and say something like, well, that's kind of stupid. Maybe we should do it this way. This comes into play in a lot of situations. And Malcolm Gladwell talks about how many airline catastrophes can be linked directly to this being out of balance. When there's high stakes situation, there needs to be direct communication of what's going on in the situation. Say your fuel is running low and you're the co-pilot. You need to be able to tell your pilot that, hey, the fuel is running low. This is a serious issue. We need to get this figured out right now. Compared to being overly polite and saying something like, uh, hey, we might need to uh, look at the fuel. It's getting a little bit low and uh, we might want to do something about it. Now all those filler words that I add in there is what's called mitigated speech. And it's basically has the intent of making the speech a little bit more polite so that you are respecting their authority and not stepping on anybody's toes. However, when you do that sort of mitigated speech, it creates a lot of ambiguity in the situation because the boss might think, well, it doesn't seem very urgent about it. It must not be that important. We're gonna ignore the fuel gauge because hey, he just didn't make it seem like it was that important of an issue. And when enough of these little miscommunications get stacked on top of each other, this is how planes go down. It is multiple layers of mistakes, small mistakes, that compound on each other and then get to the point where it's a catastrophe. So this doesn't only relate to aviation. This relates to business as well. Take the example for maybe a new employee joins the team and notices something wrong with one of the servers or something logistical. However, in trying to be deferential to the boss, puts it in a way where the speech is very mitigated, where it's very polite. And they say something like, hey, um, when you get a chance, you might wanna look at uh, this error that I might have found and you know, we might wanna do something about it eventually if you're okay with it. Now, the problem that arises with this is the same one in the plane situation. The boss, because the employee put it in a way that was so polite and so nice, however, he or she doesn't necessarily know that that person is trying to be polite or nice. In this situation, the boss might take that as a misinterpretation, meaning that the air that they found wasn't that urgent and that they can wait until another day. However, in the employee's head, what they really meant to say was, hey, this is a huge problem and we need to get this 
happening now. However, because of the power distance index, they were scared to speak up and be blunt in this assertive way. So this doesn't only relate to business as well. And when I'm traveled to other countries, you see this play out in many manifestations in the culture. For instance, when you go to bars in Japan, everybody actually stands in a line when they go up to the bar to get a drink. And if you've been to a bar in the US, it's quite the opposite. Nobody's standing in a line and everybody just rushes to any spot on the bar that they can find to try to get a drink as quickly as possible. And interestingly enough, it also manifests in the different languages that cultures have built. For instance, in America, um, there's not a lot of different verb forms or noun forms to imply respect to people. But in Spanish, and Mexico is one of the higher PD countries there is to and usted which shows uh, different levels of respect and is a different way to address people and then you have a language like Korean which has multiple layers of this hierarchy built into the nouns built into the verbs so that you can address people appropriately and you can be appropriately respectful to your superiors when you're talking so how do we apply this into our lives to make sure that we're not falling victim to this mistake well, um, as a leader, you need to do certain things in order to ensure that people feel comfortable to speak up. And in the book, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell talks about this famous pilot. His name was Rot Wade. And he was a veteran seasoned pilot who was also an expert in behavioral sciences. And he would take the time to talk with every co-pilot to ensure that they felt comfortable speaking up and pointing out his mistakes. And he would actually encourage them to point out his mistakes so that if something did come up that they saw that he didn't catch, they would speak up and be able to divert the crisis. So you need to have that criticism from others and it's not enough to just expect other people to criticize you freely. You have to tell people and you have to encourage them to speak up and to criticize you and to push back on certain plans that you might be implementing because if you don't, then they're naturally going to defer to your authority and it's going to cause major blind spots within the organization and within your game plan. So you might be asking, how can I follow this concept if I'm not a leader within my company, if I'm more of an employee within my company? How do I not fall victim to the same concept? Well, basically you have to make sure that you're not being overly deferential depending on the country that you're in. If you live in a country with a low PDI index like America or Israel or Austria, most of Europe and New Zealand, then the assumption that that culture would be operating under is that you should be able to respond with criticism. And this is something that I struggled with for some reason. Maybe it's because I have my background in martial arts and Taekwondo. It's a very uh, Korean culture. I brought that natural sense of respect and addressing people with the right uh, deference. However, oftentimes that's not the best way that you're going to gain your superior's respect. And once I started integrating the fact that I'm in a country that has a low PDI, it makes sense to talk more bluntly with people and to be more assertive. And they're oftentimes going to appreciate it 10 times over because it's going to help them see things that they weren't seeing and it's going to make the organization work much smoother as a whole compared to if you were to just keep your mouth shut and not give the valuable insights that you've been seeing. Also put this in context because because if you're in a country where it has a high PDI like Panama or the Philippines or uh, South Korea, you want to make sure in the workplace that you are being deferential and sticking with these social norms because stepping too far out of that is actually going to give you negative image and negative reputation within your company. So it really depends on context. And learning this concept also helps you when you go to other countries. Um, for instance, you'll notice that people in Israel, even, even being in America that has a low PDI, if you go to a place like Israel, people are often a little more pushy and it can be a little bit intimidating. And once you understand this concept, you can learn that people aren't being pushy and intimidating to purposefully uh, make you feel smaller. That is just how they communicate out there. That's just the culture out there. So I hope you found some value from this video and I hope you found it a really interesting concept. And once you see this concept, 
concept, it's really hard to unsee it. And the more you travel, the more interesting it becomes because you see it play out in every facet of everyday life, from going to the bar, to seeing people in workplace scenarios, to just understanding how people uh, do their communication in different cultures. So now Alan's in the shot, he wanted to share a few thoughts on you know what his experience has been with the power distance index yeah. in his travels. So I haven't actually read that book, but just learning it from Derek, I've totally noticed it in all the countries I've been to. So in the last year, I've been to seven different countries and it's super noticeable, especially in South America and in the Philippines. Derek uh, and I just got back from the Philippines about two weeks ago. And then after I got back from the Philippines, he went to Tokyo with one of our other buddies. And in the Philippines, it's a super, is it, is it high PDI? That's, yeah, it's super high So like PDI. very, very formal. There's not pushiness. No one is gonna like say things. Like, I feel like if you were about to get hit by a car, people might not even be like, hey, hey. Yeah. Like I yeah, swear yeah. to God. Uh, and then in South America, in Peru, I also noticed that too, but in I mean, in Colombia, I noticed that too, they weren't as pushy, but in Peru, they were really pushy in Cusco, Peru, right outside of Aguas Calientes near Machu Picchu, because oh, I went wow. there. And uh, that, that was pretty interesting, uh, but, but I really liked, the, my favorite thing that, that I learned from learning this from you was uh, in the workplace, man, I'm, uh, I'm like naturally more hard on myself than on others. So I won't necessarily get super intense with other people, even if it is something that I think is a big deal. So that, that's really what helped me the most. Is, yeah. I yeah, mean, it sounds I think like it really helped me and I really noticed a difference in the respect that people give you when you are a little bit more assertive with them. Because we live in a country, America, where it's a low PDI. So that's the assumption they're operating under. They want you to be a little bit assertive and to point out mistakes and to not be overly deferential. Yeah. And it's often easy because I think, you know, parents play into this and maybe just your upbringing mm. or, you know, your personality. But yeah. it's easy to, you know, have too much respect and to just go along with things things and to take their word as God pretty much and not question it at all. But if you're operating in a country with low PDI, it's not going to help either person and you're actually going to end up losing the respect of that person in the workplace. And I'll ask you this, Derek, did you, did you find it difficult at first to, to, to say things in a less differential way? Cause, cause even me personally, like we both work in sales in door to door sales and just looking at that experience alone, like aside from talking to my boss, just that experience alone has made me much more assertive and much more like, you have to say what's going on, man. You can't just, you know, let's go to the wayside. Yeah. So I don't know, but, but I really found it difficult at first to do that. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly, it's certainly a skill. And you know, what, what I look at it is like, there's a spectrum, you know, and you're either on being too polite, you're naturally too polite of a person uh, or you're naturally too, too, too aggressive much. and you're pushing too hard. I think we can and both so, think of two people that are on the side that is too, too much. Too much. And I can think of a ton of people. people. Of? I know exactly who you're thinking of. One of them worked on my team last year, <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, so basically the, the challenge is to, is to find, find the optimal medium, right? Yeah. Figure out your starting point, yeah. and then oftentimes you sometimes need to overcorrect yeah. until you start getting feedback. And then come and full circle once yeah, you Yeah, so for instance, if you're too polite, you know, you can be more aggressive, and you're gonna start getting feedback. People are gonna tell you what they find. You're gonna be able to see if somebody respects you more right. after or before right. you said what you said, right? It's gonna be very obvious to you. Right. And so oftentimes you can push that boundary. And when you start pushing the boundary, what you'll oftentimes realize is that you're not pushing the boundary. Yeah, like it's, it's worse think. in your head than it is in, in the real reality of the situation. Yeah, and exactly. Just to give some context of how you would actually go about doing that, because that can sound intimidating without examples. I just like to think of it like this. When you're first talking to anyone or anyone that you already have a relationship with, you guys are always pinging off each other what's appropriate. So think of the last time you became friends with someone. If you have dark humor like me and Derek, I'm sure me and Derek both don't just start out with our super dark humor. We'll kind right. of ease ourselves into it you know like if this is the circle of what's okay and we know that that's okay with that person you'll kind of go maybe an inch outside of the circle are they okay with it all right you expand the circle a little bigger yeah then, then you go you know go another and two two inches but never just jump like three feet outside of the comfort zone yeah just, or or do i mean you're do. gonna get the feedback either way and, and but that, it brings up an interesting point because this pdi concept is compounded when you don't know somebody and in Malcolm yeah. Gladwell's book, he talks about plane crashes in South Korea and all these countries with high PDIs, but the chances went up even more exponentially when the co-pilot and pilot 
didn't know each other. Mm. Because one, they're trying to be polite because of the culture, mm. and two, they're trying to be polite because it's a stranger. And so really in a business situation, if you're in a leadership role and you're trying to run a tight organization that's not gonna have huge blind spots, you have to get everybody to know each other, get everybody comfortable with each other, and then lay out the groundwork of like, it is encouraged, it is accepted for you to speak up, for you to disagree here. Like we want feedback, we want criticism. And you need to make that the value and so that everybody is upholding that value. Whereas if you don't say that, it's not enough. People aren't naturally gonna do that because one, they're strangers, and two, they wanna be respectful, mm. right? I like that point a lot about strangers because I think if I just think of all my friends, even with you, like even if I naturally have a little bit higher PDI than normal Americans, I would say that with friends, I have a lower PDI all the time. Yeah. Like I'm always going to be more straightforward with my friends than strangers because I just don't know how to behave around other people as much. The power distance index, right, between friends, it's like you're, you're none, seen as equal, none there. right? Ah. You're on the same level, so there is no power distance, right? Mm. However, you can't take that exactly, that analogy of, you know, communicating the way you communicate to a friend, to your boss, perfectly because you still want there to be a little bit of power distance. They're still higher than you yeah. in the hierarchy, and so you need to have some level of speech mitigation, maybe just, you know, little ways of saying things that make it sound like you're not bossing your boss around yeah. but still being assertive enough and getting your point across is really just the whole point yeah. of this and I think it's most applicable to business but it's really just interesting to see all across the board that when you start great. traveling to to other countries yeah and I, I think my last point on that is just when whenever we're doing these videos we'll get into these simple black and white examples but I think right now as we're talking to each other it's just proving how nuanced this is and that's really like in the end at the end of the day, the realest thing that you can say about social dynamics is it's super nuanced and like there's no right or wrong thing to do necessarily in every situation. The gray area is what scares people a lot of the time with acting, but I have found that in my own life, just stepping into the gray is what allows you to ping off figuring out what's okay and what's not and just knowing that since you're a human your brain is so good at pattern recognizing social dynamics anyway that if you put yourself out of your comfort zone you will figure it out right exactly i think that's a good point to end on so boom that's the end of the video yeah guys so as always keep it open-ended peace